Um, as she said, my name is Sarah Clark. I am a master's student in the biology department here at Utah State, and my advisor is Dr. James Pitts. He is in the entomology department. So recently there has been an incredible increase in oil and gas development nationwide, and this increase has actually um, caused some increase in concerns that this uh, development may be negatively influencing the nation's um, flora and fauna. What I'd like to discuss today is the potential effects of energy development on pollinators and rare plants in the Piance Basin of Colorado. So for those who don't know where the Piance Basin is, it is located in the northwestern portion of the state of Colorado. It's outlined here on the map in black. The area where I did my re research is called the Dudley Bluffs, and it's approximately a 13 square area that um, is indicated here with a smiley face. <laughs> so some background, the Piance Basin reflects the national changes in the oil and gas industry where there's been a huge increase in uh, energy development in this area. Um, there's a proposed 17,000 additional natural gas wells going into the Piance Basin within the next two decades and that's a huge amount of development. Um, there's again been concerns about the effects of this development on the basin's flora and fauna with specific concerns emanating from the effect on the seven rare plants that are found in the basin. And these concerns um, are reflected from the uh, increase in anthropogenic or energy development. Um, it may actually have a impact on the basin's native pollinator community. So uh, as the native pollinator uh, community decreases, that would potentially decrease the amount of pollination services that is available to the basin's flora. With a decrease in pollination, obviously there's going to be a decrease in fecundity levels found in the plants in this area. And that could even negatively affect um, potentially the uh, rest of the fauna found in the basin. So the two species of plants that I used to conduct this study are both listed as threatened by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They are both also endemic to a 13 mile uh, square section of white shale soil. The first species is Fusaria congesta. It's a very small plant. Here you can see it in reference to a penny. Um, another reference is my lovely assistant, Rachel, is doing a hand pollination on one of the plants. You can see it's very small. Uh, the other plant is Fusaria obcordata. It's slightly larger. Um, here you can see it in reference to a GPS unit. Both plant species are early bloomers. They bloom in early to mid-spring. And they've both been shown to require pollinators for uh, reproduction. So the questions I'll be addressing in this talk are first, what are the impacts of energy development on the uh, pollinators important for Fusaria congestin obcordata? And then second, what are the impacts of energy development on these rare plants fecundity? So to examine changes in pollinator community, I considered roads as the main development type that I was testing around, and that was done for several reasons. First, um, there are uh, many roads in this area that experience very heavy traffic. This picture actually shows a road that borders along a Fasaria congested population. In the background, you can see these large, heavy machines in, um, that are actually, at the point that this photo is taken, they're creating a new road to go to a well pad. And many new roads are created every year. With the addition of all of these wells, you also need supplemental roads to um, assist with the energy development. <coughs> And with these roads comes this problem of uh, fugitive dust where these large machines are driving along these dirt roads and they actually kick up these large airborne um, pockets of dust. Those pockets of dust may actually interfere with plant reproduction by clogging um, flowers with dust rather than pollen. And additionally, many of these rare Fusaria populations are bordered by roadsides, which made him a good candidate. 
So to look at, again, the pollinator community changes, I wanted to look at uh, the changes across a distance gradient from a given roadside. So I looked at the community composition at 10 meters, 50 meters, and 150 meters away from a given roadside. I collected pollinators off of 21 plants at each distance uh, once a week. What I wanted to look at is possible changes in the general abundance, so how many pollinators are actually on the landscape, and then also um, changes in species composition or diversity across this, the distance gradients. I statistically um, analyzed this using linear mixed models with the Glimix procedure in SAS. Uh, what was determined was that there was no changes in actual species diversity or abundance across the varying distances from roadside. So at the time the study was done, the monitoring showed no changes. Although no changes in pollinator community was found, I additionally wanted to look at potential changes in plant fecundity. Again, there may be this airborne dust that may be interfering with uh, plant reproduction, and I wanted to determine if that was a problem. So at the, the same locations that I used for the pollinator community study, uh, each of the 21 plants at the three distances had their fecundity uh, monitored throughout this season. I wanted to determine if there were changes in fruit weight, seed weight, seeds per fruit, and then in 2011, flower to fruit ratios, which was done by um, paint marking up to 10 flowers per plant that I studied, and then associating those flowers with eventual fruit production. And to analyze these, I used generalized linear models. What we determined is there was no change in fruit weight, seed weight, uh, seeds per fruit, or flower to fruit ratios. So fecundity levels are being maintained across these distance gradients. So what does this mean? We have no changes in pollinator community and we have no changes in plant fecundity. Well, this is all good, like this is what we wanted to see. However, um, with the addition of 17,000 wells going in in the peons, uh, there may be additive effects that we haven't even been, been able to see yet. So what we recommend is that when a um, well pad is being proposed for an area, that there should be sampling pre and post disturbance to determine if the pollinator community and plant fecundity changes um, before and after development happens. It could be a scenario where the pollinator community may, have, may be completely wiped out and then have to go through a series of successional events to come back in, or it could be that they're not being affected at all, and this is important to understand. We also recommend that a distance buffer be maintained between any new development and uh, rare plant populations just to mitigate any effects that actually will occur. So with that, I'd like to thank my committee members, my funding resources, and a series of my peers and colleagues that helped me out with this research. And with that, I can take any questions. We have about time for one question. Yes. You looked at only uh, species diversity of pollinators, not uh, abundance, correct? I looked at both. Okay, did you look at multiple years or only one? Two years. Two years. Yes. What is your sense about the potential for your, your the variation in the variables you measured? Um, it's actually, it's pretty high because climatic variables are so varying throughout both of my study years. The first year was a very warm, dry year. The second year was a very cold, wet year. I probably collected about an eighth of the number of pollinators the second year than I did the first year. So I think that this study should be maintained and continue for at least a couple more years to actually get uh, good results. <laughs>